Oh, Jadavion Clowney. What's the common denominator? All of them can rush the passer. Nice run that time by Cox, and he picks up a first down for a Popka as they try. And this is where a, a, a Popka up front is just getting lathered up. That was right behind, eventually behind our guy Martez Ivy off to the left side, and Cox was the up back in that I formation, and then just a quick handoff on underneath, and then it's just all about who wants it after that. Cox the up back in the power eye. He gets the call. Cox barreling through the line, and it's first and goal of Popka. This is a matter of attrition up front right now. Apopka's style is to just impose their physical will in the run game. We didn't really see it up until about the last five minutes in this game. And now it's all of a sudden about getting Ivy and the other guys up front lathered up and giving it to Chandler Cox and just letting them pound that smaller defensive front seven upside the head of Burns. You said earlier, you don't care if Cox has a position you want him on your team at the next level. Yeah, and don't be un, or don't, it's not unexpected to then flip the formation again and run the same play. They've run it twice in a row, three times in a row worked fine. We got a timeout with 8.26 to go. When we come back, our Popka got a pretty special shout out during Hall of Fame induction week. Going for the blue darters there. Has a lot of red in the backfield, a loss of five, second down and goal. And what we would expect is Mo Dixon, the defensive coordinator at Burns, is turning up the heat. Remember how this game played out for really three and a half quarters was Burns was taking the fight across the line of scrimmage. The last couple possessions, Apopka's offensive line was getting lathered up. First penetration we've seen out of Burns in a long, long while. Daquan Ison back in the game. He split wide. Darlington on the run, lowers the shoulder, and he's out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage. Third down and goal from the 12. What's that Burns doing to kind of keep Darlington in the pocket and not really get loose for big runs? Well, I think it might be more to do with Darlington. I don't think he's really feeling himself. But I think Burns has done a nice job of just realizing he gets outside the pocket, but just don't let him get positive yardage once he gets there. Here's the pressure. Darlington throws too high, incomplete. He wanted Whitrock, but there is a flag. Flag down at the 11-yard line. I think Martez Ivy may be the culprit here. The legal man downfield, and it looked like Ivy got off the line of scrimmage just a little bit before that ball was released, but that had to happen awfully quickly. That play didn't take a long time to develop. Usually it's when a quarterback is running around. And that was the man downfield on the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Now, that's hard to believe as quickly as that ball came out. If they were pointing toward Ivy on that play. A pop go one for two on fourth down. Down by eight. Burns blitzes. Darlington under pressure. Gets rid of it. And over the head of Isom, there is a penalty marker at the 20-yard line. <laughs> It's out of Popka, so Burns will take over on downs. Holding on the offense. Penalty is declined. First down. I think that holding was actually in Martez Ivy. He was the left tackle that time, and Burns was bringing the house. Mo Dixon was dialing up pressure in an obvious passing situation. And you can see Ivy is right there. Extra defenders coming. He tries to slide out to get that blitzer, and it just gets him up around the collar. A.J. James was actually the outside linebacker coming off the edge, and Ivy gets him around the collar and gets called for the hole. Schuler Bentley calls a timeout. 
Burns has one left. A Apopka all out of timeouts with 7.38 to go in regulation. ESPN's coverage of high school kickoff weekend continues at 3.30 Eastern. That's following our game on ESPN. It's Lincoln and South Gwinnett. Also at 3.30 over on ESPNU, University Christian takes on Highlands out of Kentucky. High school football on ESPN this season, 13 regular season games on the ESPN networks. Tune into Recruiting Nation Thursdays at 6 Eastern, starting September 6th on ESPNU, and then January 2nd, it's the Under Armour High School All-America game. That has been a premier showcase for prep talent on its way to the and next those level. games end up being anything like what we've seen today, I mean, the level of talent and precision in which these guys play at the high school level is, is really, really impressive. And certainly we see it in Florida. It is a recruiting hotbed perennially. Florida and Texas. Florida you hear about Texas. him all the time, and certainly they're at the top of that list. Four wide receiver set. Burns throws on first down, and Hill taken down right at the 10-yard line by Johnny Robinson, a loss of a yard. So it'll bring up second down and 11. And, you know, you wonder, Burns, how much do they trust the running game in this situation? Yeah, this is where the running game is supposed to show up, that emphasis in camp on the run game. But instead, they're going gun and, and throwing it. But remember before this year, the screen game is Burns' run game. Sure. They're, they throw it very efficiently, especially with Shula Bentley at quarterback. They'll keep it on the ground. Isaiah Hill slips one defender in the backfield, turns, spins, and knocked out of bounds to the 17-yard line. Third down coming up. Dalen Jones did a really nice job from his tackle position of getting out in front of Isaiah Hill trying to get out around the right side, but a ru run the ball effectively to melt the clock when you have to if you're a spread team. That's what a lot of spread to throw it teams lack. That's what Burns is trying to work on right here. Burns 6 of 14 on third down. Make it 6 of 15. No flag on the play to the dismay of this crowd. I think Metters that time really lost his footing. He was just running a hitch route. It was pretty tight coverage by J.J. Simmons, and we've seen that match up a lot today. And it looked like the feet went out from under Metters just as he's ready to catch this ball. You can see he's already down to a knee, and... J.J. Simmons maybe got there a little bit early, but personally, I'm glad that that play wasn't called. Receiver has to keep his feet. Don't bail him out if he falls down by calling pass interference. And there's a player down, and that appears to be Simmons. It is Simmons. Now Simmons was on in on that coverage the play before broke on the ball maybe slightly prematurely but I think a good play all the way around but once again the heat is taking its toll we see the cramping right there by JJ Simmons Simmons being tended to by the trainers and number seven Rakeem Smith it's been a tall order for this Sapopka secondary to go up against you know, Taven Richardson, who's 6'4", 210, and Shaden Metters, who's 6'2", 180. Their guys run 5'7", 5'6". Simmons is 5'7", Smith's 5'6". Robert Thomas is a power forward on that secondary team at 5'10". <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. Well, Popkin likes to play coverage in the back end, a lot of zone. What they've adjusted to is reading the routes of Burns and, and breaking on balls in the zone much better than they were the first half. Big punt here. Burns gets it off. Ray Ray Smith will have a chance for a return. He muffs it. And he covers it back up at the 30-yard line. There's a flag back at the 45-yard line. Anish, your guess is as good as mine right here. It 
It's not Apopka. Apopka was holding the bullet guy outside and burns his coverage. Zach Darlington in the state championship game last year with his team down. Oh, to lead his team. Dirty return. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Popka trying to rally again here, and it started with this. Daquan Isom, 94 yards on a kickoff return. That was followed by an interception, which led to his score. Zach Darlington finding James Kreider. And off of a fumble, that turned into another touchdown for the Blue Darters of Apopka. Here's Cox up the middle, running strong. And he's down to the 35-yard line, a gain of 14. That was the same play that was working well in the last drive. Cox is really in the fullback position in that I formation. And then it's a quick dive play, knowing right now that Apopka is winning on the line of scrimmage. And if history repeats itself, flip the formation and run it again. Ivy's now to the right side up here, and that's who they're liking to run behind, the big boy to that side. I would expect same play, opposite side. Cox again, the up back, this time a play action fake. Darlington on the run, and then driven out of bounds with authority by Lyles. Second down and 12 after a loss of two. Emil Lyles came up and just laid the wood to quarterback Zach Darlington. It was a boot play outside right, very well covered by Burns, but Zach Darlington went down hard and hasn't really moved a whole lot since then. Very clean play, very hard hit, but remember the conditions we're playing in. These players are highly fatigued at this point in time. Darlington took a big hit. Very legal. Darlington was actually lowering his head and became a runner at that point in time. There was no targeting with the crown of the helmet or anything like that. Certainly wasn't a defenseless player on the field, which is the other category of targeting. Clean hit. Down. Hopefully he'll get up shortly. Well, he's, he's down, the team attending to him, and that's just not something you want to see. Zach Darlington, a four-star recruit, committed to Nebraska, number 11 dual threat quarterback in the nation, and right now they're bringing out a stretcher. So, scary moment on the field with 6.03 to go in the fourth quarter. Apopka trailing Burns 44-36. We'll step aside and be back after this. Welcome back to Duncan, South Carolina with Kelly Stauffer and East Schroff. Apopka and Burns, what happens from here on out, essentially has been rendered meaningless before we cut away. Apopka quarterback Zach Darlington was hit on a sideline play. It was a clean hit. There was no flag. What happened after has all of us holding our breaths. Darlington went down, stayed down, did not show any signs of movement. He was carted off the field. He was given oxygen through that mask. He's being taken off to another field now where there's an ambulance waiting, and if need be, there's access for a medical helicopter. Chandler Cox in at quarterback, and he picks up a couple of yards. And Kelly, you see something like that, it just kind of warps you back into what's reality and what you risk every time, whether you're an NFL athlete, a college athlete, or a high school athlete, or a peewee football athlete, every time you strap on those pads and helmets. Well, the surreal moment comes when the game starts again. You know, when you the game isn't over, and so these young men have to go out there and try to do the best they can for the rest of this game. That's when it just doesn't seem to make sense to you as a player, as something goes on when your best friend and your quarterback just left the field um, in a condition unknown. And what's what's ironic about it is all what Tom Luganville talked about, all this, all of the rules changes leading, trying to address player safety, and then some of the most basic plays 
happen like that. That happens all the time in football. There are just some things in football that you can't take out of the game, and that was an example of it. Zach seemed fairly protected as we see the fake punt right here, snapping to the up back, and didn't obviously deceive Burns' defense. And One official just told me an update on Darlington's condition when he was down on the sideline. He never opened his eyes and he was never moving before Cardig being carted off, and he was given oxygen through that mask to help him breathe on his own. And you think of the dynamic for a Popka head coach, Rick Darlington, that's his son. Yeah. Think about your thoughts are with your son. You can't be there. You've got to coach this football game or see it through its completion. I can only imagine the internal conflict in Rick Darlington right now. Yeah, that's, that's one of the abnormalities in the, the conversation about that relationship we talked with Tom Luganville. You can't prepare for that moment when you're right there and you have to continue coaching and your son is, you know, in a condition that uh, makes it hard for this game to go off. You know, we wish the Darlington family all the best. We hope Zach is okay. He's got an older brother, Ty, who's at Oklahoma. His mom, Shelly. Of course, his dad, Rick, his head coach, and certainly on the other sideline, Bobby Bentley can empathize. He's got two sons playing quarterback. He saw his younger son, Jake, get injured early in the game and not return. Isaiah Hill to the 20-yard line, a first down for Burns. It obviously changes the dynamics of what we're talking about. This has been an extremely entertaining and well-played high school. What happens yeah. now is pointless. Yeah. It really is. You got a kid who wasn't opening his eyes and wasn't moving on the sideline. Flag on the play again if you're just joining us. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Penalty on Burns, if you're just joining us, moments ago, a pocket quarterback, Zach Darlington, went down on the far sideline, stayed down after the play, was not moving, did not open his eyes. He was carted off the field. There's a medical ambulance at a side field just south of the stadium, and that area is equipped for a medical helicopter. We're told that is a possibility. We have not been told if indeed a medical helicopter will come down to take Zach Darlington, but uh, it was a scary moment and still is a scary moment for all parties involved, the players, the fans, us here in the booth. It's interesting as a player that, you know, you, the injuries are a part of the game. They say that all the time, but when it's an injury like that, it moves to a different level. Especially at this a, level. Yeah, at this level, and it's a hard thing to recover from emotionally, and, and that's what you see right now. These players are just trying to get to the end of this game. Coming up on three minutes to play here in the fourth quarter, 44-36 Burns leading Apopka. Burns at a 44-20 lead. Apopka had scored 16 unanswered to get back into the game. And no doubt that Nebraska, as Zach Darlington has a verbal commit, and Bo Pelini and his staff in some form were tuned into this game, and to see that happen, they're probably scrambling to get more information as we speak as well. And I can still see to the right of us outside of the stadium that Zach Darlington is still being attended to kind of underneath the makeshift tent. So I'm not exactly sure they've made a decision on what to do with transportation.
Nelson man downfield. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. And a chopper is now coming in, a medical helicopter to take Zach Darlington, the Apopka quarterback in Nebraska commit. And of course, our thoughts and prayers go out to his family and his dad, Rick, who's on that Apopka sideline. Another touchdown for Burns, sixth TD pass of the game for Schuler Bentley. I really can't believe the scene, to be honest with you. We showed a shot of the helicopter, and the game continues, and I'm not warranting just saying, hey, two minutes and 29 seconds doesn't matter, but two minutes and 29 seconds doesn't matter. Both of these coaches talk about how football is just a vehicle to teach life lessons, and this lesson is a really, really difficult one to hear. Injury in this game is never too far away. You, you know that as a player, but when it happens in this form, you just, it just strikes you somewhere you're not prepared for. All we can tell you right now about Zach Darlington, we have confirmed that he is conscious when he was carted off the field He was not moving and his eyes were closed, but we are told he is conscious right now and is going to be airlifted from the field. That is the furthest extent of the information we have at this point. And obviously the, the medical staff, you always err on the side of caution anyway. And so Lord willing, that's what we're seeing. But nonetheless, it's just a surreal moment to, to watch unfold. And we have some good news. We're being told he was knocked unconscious, is now moving on his own. So that is a big relief <laughs> to a lot of us worried about the status of Zach Darlington, the senior quarterback for Apopka. That is awesome news, absolutely. Fair catch. For Apopka. 2.29 to go here in regulation. Outcome all but decided and entirely secondary. You played quarterback, Kelly. What goes through your mind when you see something like that? It's tough to see, to be quite honest with you. I've, I haven't been in that position. I've been, you know, the concussion issue and all of that, but. I've never actually been knocked unconscious on the football field and had players that had, teammates that have. As a quarterback, how much do you think about things like that? You know, it's amazing how you typically have the ability to put it completely out of your mind. And what's ironic is Zach Darlington is a, we talked about at the top, he's a quintessential dual threat guy. And he was outside the pocket where guys like that that have that ability, which I never did, they're more comfortable out there than they are in the pocket most of the time. And it was in many ways a routine hit, but you recall that nothing in this game is really routine. It just doesn't happen very often. Final two minutes in regulation. Zach Darlington right now being loaded into the helicopter. Again, he was not unconscious. He has since regained consciousness and is moving. That is the latest update. Short gain for Cox. Burns on its way to improving to 14 and three 
against out-of-state opponents since 2002. But uh, again, we're glad that Zach Darlington is moving and is conscious as the helicopter is about to airlift him off of a side field. And Zach is a tough dude. I mean, the, the state championship a year ago highlights that. He had a high ankle sprain in the second round of the state playoffs. He broke his wrist on his throwing hand. Isom breaks the tackle, still on his feet, taken down at the 22-yard line. Less than a minute to play. And Zach played through that broken wrist, kind of with a soft cast, and they go on to win this improbable, unbelievable state championship game, 53-50, and he had one of the games of his life. Yeah, he threw for 254 yards in that game, ran for another 125, two TDs through the air, and engineered a 13-play, 80-yard drive to give a pop go the 2012 Class A state title. Chandler Cox runs it up the middle, and that should be the final play of this game. I know Rick Darlington, the head coach for Apopka, probably wants to get to his son as soon as he can. Burns with an impressive win. And for Apopka, we pray a speedy recovery is in store for their senior quarterback, Zach Darlington. The helicopter is taking Zach Darlington from the field. If you're just joining us, the Apopka quarterback was knocked unconscious. He is conscious now, and he is moving. His dad, Rick, is the Apopka head coach. Final score from Duncan, South Carolina. And Nixon Field, Burns 51, Apopka 36. For Kelly Stauffer, I'm Anish Schroff, and we hope Zach Darlington gets better fast. Coming up next here on ESPN, the high school football showcase continues. It's Lincoln against South Gwinnett, Matt Stinchcomb, and Clay Matvick on the call. Darter News Network. Good morning, Apopka. Today is August 27, 2013, and I'm Sadiq. And I'm Billy. I'm Brianna Williams. This is my video on how to buy a locker. Hi guys, I'm Sierra. I'm the Vice President of SGA and how you buy a locker is you pay five dollars at the beginning of the year or anytime during the school year and you give us your combination lock and we write it down in the books and you get your locker basically and you're not allowed to share lockers. That's about it. You can buy your locker in the SGA building or you can buy your locker at orientation. Thanks for watching. The first meeting for Drama Club and Thespians will be next Wednesday, September 4th in Miss Miner's room, room 836. All students are welcome. The discipline video will be shown sometime this week. Check for times. The Apopka police want you to Remember that it is unlawful to be dropped off and picked up in the middle of the street. You can get a ticket for this. Migrant students, taking initiative, hurry and submit your folder to your migrant advocate ASAP. You may submit it at the end of the class, during lunch, and before or after school. The meeting for all boys and girls interested in playing tennis for the 2013-2014 school year has been rescheduled for tomorrow, right after school. The Chess Club will meet after school this Friday, August 30th, in room 522. Anyone interested in freshman class council, applications are due by Friday, September 6th, in room 525. Welcome to Apopka. Hello, I'm Mrs. Boot, and I am the course teacher at Apopka High School. 
In chorus, students learn, obviously, to sing. That's something that's really important. They also learn to read music and learn about music and uh, the styles of the correct styles of the songs, etc. We also learn about, a lot about leadership and performance skills. It encompasses a lot of different things that people don't even think about. I actually teach four levels of chorus. I teach freshman women's chorus. Then we teach, uh, I teach a class called Choral, which is girls who are in 10th through 12th grade. And then another class, which is Bel Canto, which is for girls as well, and that is an advanced, um, more of a show choir type performance group. And then we have our men's chorus. And out of that group is a group of guys called Out of the Blue. In addition to chorus, I also teach two piano classes. The Lady Dara Bowling Team is looking for girls. Practice is every Tuesday through Friday after school at Wakaiva Brunswick Lanes. You must have a current physical on file with school to participate. See Coach Hauser for more information. This Friday is the last day to purchase a yearbook for $65. After Friday, the price goes up to $70. See Ms. Springer in room 536, 537 to order. If you are interested in becoming a member of National Technical Honor Society, see Mr. Gonzalez in room 534 to pick up an application. This society offers recognition status, certifications, and exclusive scholarship opportunities. Juniors and seniors, a representative from Mississippi Valley State University will be visiting Apopka High School on August 28th at 8 a.m. Anyone interested <coughs> can sign up on the college visit sign up in the student services. Any student that attends will receive a ticket to Mississippi State, Mississippi Valley State versus Florida A&M University football game, which will be Sunday, September 1st at the Citrus Bowl. Through next Friday, September 6th, the cross country will be selling Capri Suns for only 50 cents. I want one. Two quarters. Beta Club applications oh, are available in room 641. Anybody interested in joining Beta Club this year <laughs> needs to complete one. Attention all AVID students. The first meeting of the AVID Club will be held in Dr. Kendall's room this Thursday, August 29th at 2.15. If you would like to be an officer, come prepared to give a speech. All AVID students are welcome. Lockers this week will only be sold before or after school and during lunch in the SGA building. Um, as you all know, last Saturday we went up to South Carolina to play Burns High School and one of the very important members of our DNN family, Zach Darlington, was injured. In the fourth quarter. And we just want to let you guys know that he's going to be okay and we all wish him a speedy and healthy recovery. We love you, Zach. Love you, Zach. Bye, Papka. I would have said it. That's way too said it. Bye, Papka. Bye. 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 I have a lot to say. I already said it. All right, done. Broadcast of the Darter News Network. Good, Good morning, morning Apopka. Apopka. Today is August 26, 2013, and I'm Tyler, and this is DNN4. And I'm Carly. Oh. And this is the first broadcast, the 21st year of the DNN. Yeah, DNN is now older than you. Most of you, anyways. The first meeting of the Drama Club and the Thespians will be next Wednesday, September 4th, in the Miss Miners room. Room 836. All students are welcome. There will be a meeting for all boys and girls interested in playing tennis for the 2013-2014 season tomorrow, August 27th in room 508, immediately after school. The Apopka police want you to remember that it is unlawful to be dropped off and picked up in the middle of the street. You can get a ticket for this. No, no, no. <laughs> If you are interested in becoming a member of the National Technical Honor Society, see Mr. Gonzalez in 534 to pick up an application. The society offers recognition, status, certifications, and exclusive scholarships opportunities. Juniors and seniors, a representative from Mississippi Valley State University will be visiting AHS on Wednesday, August 28th at 8 a.m. Anyone interested can sign up on the college visit sign up in student services. Any student that attends will receive a ticket to the Mississippi Valley State versus Florida A&M University football game, which will be held Sunday, September 1st at the Citrus Bowl. The teen bus will be coming today. Teen parents, please see Ms. Phillips in room 402. 
Starting today through this Friday, September 6th, the cross country team will be selling Capri Fun. Capri, <laughs> <laughs> Capri signs for only 50 cents. <laughs> Beta Club applications are available in room 641. Anyone interested in joining Beta Club this year needs to complete one. Attention all AVID students. The first meeting of the AVID Club will be held in Dr. Kendall's room this Thursday, August 29th at 2.15. If you would like to be an officer, come prepared to give a speech. All AVID students are welcome. Hey everybody, welcome to Apopka. Be sure to come out and watch the football team uh, play on Friday nights for varsity and Thursday nights for freshmen and JV. Return to the Mac, get up what it is, what it does, what it is, what it isn't Looking for a better way to get up out of bed instead of getting on the internet and checking a new hit Get up, fresh shot, come strut, walk it, little bit of humble, a little bit of cautious Somewhere between like Rocky and Cosby's for the game, no, no, y'all can't copy it Yeah, yeah we're walking in this here, it's our party, my posse's been on Broadway And we did it all way, pro music, I shed my skin and put my I'm 10, I'm a senior, and I'm about to show you where the clinic is. Yeah, go. Thanks for watching. I hope you know where the clinic is now. Have a great Hi, day, Apopka. Dude. I can say what I want. Whatever. Squad. Dude. Deuces. <laughs> <laughs>
There is a meeting for officers of the National Honor Society on Tuesday, September 3rd in room 533 after school. All members will have their meeting on September 10th in the cafeteria at 2.15. Until next Friday, September 6th, the cross-country team will be selling Capri Suns for only 50 cents. Our skating club applications are available in room 641. Anyone interested in joining Beta Club this year needs to, to complete one. Attention all AVID students. The first meeting of the AVID Club will be held in Dr. Kendall's room tomorrow, August 29th at 2.15. If you would like to be an officer, come prepared to give a speech. All AVID students are welcome. If you are interested in becoming a member of the National Technical Honor Society, see Mr. Gonzalez in room 534 to pick up an application. This society offers recognition, status, certification, certifications, and exclusive scholarship opportunities. The Gay Straight Alliance will hold its first meeting of the year in room 642 tomorrow, August 29th, directly after school. Everyone is encouraged to come. The first meeting for the Anime Club is next Tuesday. Meeting, the meeting is in room 503. All anime fans are encouraged to come. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Calvin. I'm a senior this year and I'm going to show you the quickest ways to get to the science building on time. We are at the 400 building and I'll show you the quickest way to get to the science building. Let's get it. Okay. And there's the science building. If you are interested in face painting or crazy blue and white day, come to the art club tomorrow after school. Any girl interested in cheering for the 2013-2014 basketball team needs to attend a mandatory meeting next Tuesday, September 3rd, di directly after school in room 429. Do you need community service hours? Do you occasionally enjoy free food? Come join the Interact Club, the Interact Club of AHS is a way to reach out to our community. We will meet every other Thursday in room 422. Students interested in joining the National Arts Honor Society, please stop by Mr. Hoover's class in room 503 on Thursday or Friday to get an application. If you have a good GPA and love the arts, the National Honor National Arts Honor Society wants you. <laughs> Good morning, Apopka. Today is Tuesday, September 3rd, 2013, and this is the DNN. I'm Kat. And I'm Kelly. Kelly <laughs> Roper, and this is my video on how to walk up the stairs correctly. about walking up the stairs tonight. Hope you guys have a good year and walk up the stairs. Hey, I'm Bianca and I'm a senior at Apopka High School and I'm going to show you how to get your community service papers. Hi, I'm Miss Knowles, guidance counselor at Apopka High School in charge of community service. If you are looking to turn in some community service hours during, during the school year, you can come pick a form up in student services and then return it to basket right in front. Bye Apopka, get your community service papers. It's done. The first meeting for Drama Club and Thespians will be tomorrow in room 836. Attention all students, nominate your favorite teacher for Beef O'Brady's Teacher of the Week. The nominations box is in the cafeteria. Remember, teachers are people too, well, except for Skyhill. 
Attention, migrant students taking initiative, hurry and submit your folder to your migrant advocate uh, ASAP. Anyone interested in becoming a member of the STEP team, the Divine Darter Diamonds, there will be an, international, an informational meeting on Thursday after school in room 423. If you cannot make this meeting, see Ms. Simmons in room 423. All cheerleaders, you have practice today. JV, you have your picture. Catherine Comento will be practicing how to spell Apopka. What? <laughs> Anyone interested in freshman class council? Applications are due Friday in room 525. The Lady Darter bowling team is looking for girls. Practice is every Tuesday through Friday after school at Wakiva Brunswick Lanes. You must have a current physical on file with the school to participate. See Coach Hauser for more information. There is a meeting for officers of the National Honor Society today in room 533 after school. All members will have their meeting on September 10th in the cafeteria at 2.15. The anime meeting is today after school in room 503. Beta Cub will be having its first meeting on September 9th right after school in front of the cafeteria. There will be a girls and boys soccer meeting today after school in the auditorium. If you are interested in soccer at AHS, you need to attend. If you cannot attend, please see Coach Matthews in 839 for girls soccer and Coach Kasabi in 427 for boys soccer. Any girl interested in cheering for the 2013-2014 basketball team needs to attend a mandatory meeting today directly after school in room 429. Do you need community service hours? Do you occasionally enjoy free food? Come join the Interact Club. The Interact Club at AHS is a way to reach out to your community. We will meet every other Thursday in room 422. Any students interested in joining the National Arts Honor Society, please stop by Mr. Hooveris' class, room, four, room 503, to get an application. If you have a good GPA and love the arts, the National Arts Honor Society wants you. SGA Talent Show tryouts are Thursday, September 5th in the SGA building. Make plans now and you must have a 2.0 to audition. Bye, Popka! Bye, Popka! <laughs>Good morning, morning Apopka. Apopka. Today is Wednesday, September 4th, 2013. I'm Molly. And I'm Tyler. And this is DNN Squad. This is Cliche, and my video is about medical magnets. <laughs> for anybody that would like to seek information about medical careers. 
and uh, we cover everything. Basics from the history of medicine all the way up through anatomy and physiology. Welcome to Thanks for watching my video. Welcome to Apopka. Go daughter. Attention all students. Nominate your favorite teacher for Bevo Brady's Teacher of the Week. The nominations box is in the cafeteria. Remember, teachers are people too. Well, except for Sixth Gay Hill. <laughs> Attention migrant students taking initiative. Hurry and submit your folder to Migrant Advocate ASAP. Anyone interested in becoming a member of the STEP team, the Divine Darter Diamonds, there will be an informational meeting tomorrow after school in room 423. If you cannot make this meeting, see Ms. Simmons in 423. Anyone interested in freshman class council, applications are due Friday in room 525. Beta Club members having its first meeting on September 9th, right after school in front of the cafeteria. Do you need community service hours? Do you occasionally enjoy free food? Come join the Interact Club. The Interact Club of AHS is a way to reach out to our community. We will meet every other Thursday in room 422. Any students interested in joining the National Arts Honor Society, please stop by Mr. Hoover's classroom, 503, on to get an application. If you have a good GPA and love the arts, the National Arts Honor Society wants you. They want you. SGA talent show tryouts are tomorrow, September 5th, in the SGA building. Make plans now, and you must have a 2.0 to audition. If you are interested in joining the National English Honor Society, please see Ms. Littlefield in room 612 to pick up an application. Applications will be due Friday, September 13th. Mu Alpha Theta will have its first meeting this Friday at room at 215 in room 545. Please see Ms. Jackson if you have any questions. Senior last chance pictures will be Tuesday, September 10th. You need to be present when we call your Alpha Block. Under class picture day will be September 13th. You will receive information from your English teacher to take home. Bye, Popka. Have a good day. Peace out. Squad. 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 <laughs> Squad, 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 squad. I can't say it. I'm wearing this thing. Hey guys, welcome to Apopka. I'm Anna and here is a bit on how to use Destiny. Here we go. The first thing that you want to do is go on to the website which is destiny.ocps.net. Once you do that, you scroll down to high schools and you click on Apopka High School. It'll take you to this page, go to the right corner and click log in. You log in using your student ID and your birth date. Once you log in, you'll come to this page, go to the left corner and click My Info. You can see your textbooks you have checked out and fines that you owe, books you have on hold, and recommended titles. If you have a book currently checked out, it will come up under Items Out. To the left of it will be a Renew button, and that comes in handy if you can't make it to school or you forget your book. You can renew it, and this helps you avoid having to pay a fine. You can also click Catalog in the left, and you can search books that your school has and see if they are available and read up on them a bit. If you go to your left, you can click Destiny Quest. And this website is pretty cool. You can add friends, write your friends, sort books into ones you want to read, or currently reading, and books you have read. You can do that just by searching the title of a book, clicking go, and dragging it right to the list. If you go to the Destiny home page, it shows you the top 10 books, resource lists, and books that are new to your library. And also, you can see your info, just like there was on the first page, books you have checked out on hold, lists or recommendations. So Destiny 
is a really cool website. I really recommend using it. It comes in handy with sorting books, staying organized, and also paying fines. It just makes things a little bit easier for you, and I really recommend using it. So have a great year, everyone. You're going to love it. Mu Alpha Theta will have its first meeting this Friday at 2.15 in room 545. Please see Miss Jackson if you have any questions. Senior last chance pictures will be Tuesday, September 10th. You need to be present when we call your alpha block. Underclass pictures will be Friday, September 13th. You will receive information from your English teacher to take home. Attention AHS artists, the school online newspaper, The Insight is holding an art competition for this year's head design. The winner artist will receive a free staff shirt and have their design on the newspaper header and on the staff shirt. Go to room 536 for information. A representative from Rollins College will be visiting AHS on Thursday, September 12th at 9 a.m. Sign up in the student services if you are interested. A representative from the Advanced College of Health Science, also known as Florida Hospital College, will be here to visit Apopka on Tuesday, September 1st. Any junior or senior interested may sign up on the College Visit Sign Up Board in Student Services. Bye, Bye Papka. Papka. Of the Darter News Network. Good, Good morning, morning Papka. Papka. Today is Friday, September 6, 2013. I'm Matt. And this is Josh. And welcome to the DNN 5A. Hi, this is Miranda. I'm going to show you how to join a tennis team. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mario. I'm part of the tennis team, Tennis Mac Daddy. And to try out for tennis, it's a spring sport. You have to go to the front office, get a physical, fill it out, and then take it to your doctor. They'll complete it, whatever you take it to tryouts. So you're legible to play, to talk to coach for any questions. His name is Coach Pitts. He is in the 500 building, closest to the cafeteria, first story, all the way at the end on the right. And have fun and hit balls. <laughs> it's always exciting going and watching the school tennis matches. <laughs> I love playing tennis on the weekends with my friends who run the team. <laughs> watching that video. I hope it helps. Bye! Attention all students, nominate your favorite teacher for Beef O'Brady's Teacher of the Week. The nominations box is in the cafeteria. Remember, teachers are people too, except for Melon. This year's homecoming thing will be Jungle Safari. Homecoming will take place at the Rosen Plaza on iDrive, Saturday, September 28th from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. Don't miss it. Beta Club will be having its first meeting on Monday, September 9th, right after school in front of the cafeteria. Do you need community service hours? Do you occasionally enjoy free food? Come join the Interact Club. The Interact Club is of, H a of AHS is a way to reach out to our community. We will meet every other Thursday in room 422. Any students interested in joining the National Arts Honor Society, please stop by Mr. Hoover's class, room 503, to get an application. If you have a good GPA and love the arts, the National Arts Honor Society wants you. Do you enjoy coming to Apopka's home sporting events? Then you need an all-season sports pass for only $50. This gets you into all home regular season games for the rest of the school year. Get yours in the athletic office. If you're interested in joining the National English Honor Society, please see Mrs. Littlefield in room 612 to pick up an application. Applications will be due Monday, September 16th. Tickets will go on sale for the Wakaiva football game next, next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday during school. Get yours soon so you don't have to deal with long lines at the gate. Seniors, last chance pictures will be Tuesday, September 10th. You will need to be present when we call your alpha block. Underclass picture day will be Friday, September 13th, and you will receive information from your English teacher to take home. 
Attention AHS artists. The school online newspaper, The Insight, is holding an art competition for this year's header, header design. The winning artist will receive a free staff shirt and have their design on the newspaper header and the staff shirt. And on the staff shirt. Go to room 536 for information. A representative from Rollins College will be visiting AHS on Thursday, September 12th at 9 a.m. Sign up in Student Services if you are interested. Attention all members of the National Social Studies Honor Society. There is a meeting today after school in the SGA building. That includes me. A representative from Adventist College of Health Science, also known as Florida Hospital College, will be here to visit Apopka on Tuesday, September 17th. Any junior or senior interested may sign up on the college visit sign-up board in the student services room. The black Hoka Hay shirts and the gray state champion shirts will be on sale for $10 while supplies last. Get them before they run out. Goodbye, Apopka. Enjoy your day. Have a great day. You're all beautiful. Stay sexy. I lied. Love you, Mr. Mellon. For all. And now to a special edition of the DNN. You'll be the prince, and I'll be the princess. It's a love story. Baby, just say yes. Good morning, Apopka. Today's Tuesday, September 10th. I'm Lauren. And I'm Josh, and this is the DNN. Welcome to Apopka High School. This is a look at our softball team. If you like it, come and join us. If you like math, does persevering give you pure math joy? Then Mu Alpha Theta wants you. Mu Alpha Theta is the prestigious honor society for mathematics, and we are now accepting applications for new members. Please see Ms. Jackson in room 545 for an application. Applications are due September 25th. Freshman boys interested in trying out for the Apopka basketball team need to attend a meeting the Friday the 13th in Coach Pitt's room 507 right after school. National English Honor Society applications are still available in room 612 and must be submitted by Monday, September 16th. GSA will be meeting this Thursday, September 12th in room 642. Anyone is welcome. Need volunteer hours? Check out the Oakland Nature Preserve at oaklandnaturepreserve.org. Juniors and seniors, a representative from UCF will be visiting Apopka High School on Thursday, September 19th at 1 p.m. Any student interested in hearing the presentation may sign up on the College Visit Sign-Up Board and Student Services. Attention all National Honor Society members. NS NHS will be meeting today after school in the cafeteria. Attendance of all members is required, so don't miss it. The College and Career Room and Student Services is now open. Our volunteers will be happy to provide you with available scholarship applications. You will also find helpful information on various universities, ACT, SAT prep books, and financial aid. We will receive new scholarships each week, so please visit the College and Career Room on a regular basis. 
The National Technical Honor Society will hold its first members only meeting this Wednesday right after school at 1.15 p.m. in room 534. If you have not yet applied, go see Ms. Gonzalez. <laughs> Interact will meet this Thursday, September 12th after school in room 422. We will be signing up volunteers to work at the Pancake Supper here at AHS on Friday the 13th. <laughs> it's rivalry week against Wakaiba. At each lunch shift, there will be a different activity to get you pumped up to beat Wakaiba, like hula hooping. Uh, Friday night today is limbo. Wednesday is ball toss. <laughs> Thursday is find the worm. And Friday is pin the tail on the Mustang and hot potato. <laughs> Powder puff cheer cheerleader tryouts for senior and junior boys will be held in the lobby of the gym Wednesday after school. I will be there. <laughs> Bye, Apopka. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, Apopka. Today is Monday, September 9th, 2013. This is Steven. And this is Keaton. And welcome to the DNN Cinco Bay. Do you like math? Does persevering give you pure math joy? Then Moy Alpha Theta wants you. Moy Alpha Theta is a prestigious honor society for mathematics, and we are now accepting applications for new members. Please see Ms. Jackson in room 545 for an application. Applications are due for September 25th. Freshman boys interested in trying out for the Apopka basketball team need to attend a meeting Friday the 13th in Coach Pitt's room 507, right after school. The varsity boys bowling team defeated Circle Christian by a score of 2,991 to 2,710 in a match held Thursday at Colonial Lanes. Outstanding performances were turned in by P.D. Virgos, Justin and Jake Thornton, who all averaged over 600 in three games. Other team members include Grant Dubay, Nick Moyer, Daniel Dixon, and Jonathan Jodhan. Good job, guys. The varsity girls bowling team lost their game to Circle Christian by a score of 875 to 1,350. Chris Tessery had a high series of 427. My name is Jacob Hutchinson, and this is My name is Jacob Hutchinson, and this is Apopka Golf. We work as a team. We're not, it's not an individual sport at Apopka. It's a team sport. And that's what really sets us apart from other high schools. <laughs> when you hit multiple iron shots each round, your ball gets dirt on it. So, you place the ball in there. You stroke up and down. Just like that, you see some of the soap, the white stuff, it's soap, and cleans the ball, cleans all the dirt right off. Brand new. Coach Donald Carey, he's a real great guy, and uh, not only does he help me swing it better, but he also helps me mentally. He uh, helps me as much as he can, and he's awesome. Thanks, Coach. The Apopka Men's Golf Team will be playing this week at Zellwood Station Golf Club. Come out and support your high school golf team. Down, I, I do honestly think that we will go far in the football team this year. 
And that's it. Bye, Popka. And remember, I don't always watch the DNN, but when I do, I prefer Cinco Bear. <laughs>